This conference will now be recorded. This is an instructional for a step-by-step -step process on how to fill out the Bowling Blitz registration and final scores form for the 2020 and 2021 Bowling Blitz offered by Special Olympics Montana. The first thing you'll want to note is what date that your teams have these forms due. So right here in the middle of the document, you can see there is a line for adult season due dates and a line for school season due dates. The day that the registrations are due, well, right here, and then the day that the final scores are due. Now, when it goes to actually filling out the form, you're going to start at the top of the document and fill in your delegation or your team name. So for the majority of this document, we will be making up names and locations. So we will call our team the Helena Dinosaurs. Our LPC name, you will write down your local program coordinator name, most likely the person filling out this form. You'll write down your LPC phone number. You write down your LPC email. Your mailing address so we can send you personal protective equipment if it is needed. And then the name of the bowling alley or bowling alleys that your team will be utilizing. If you are utilizing more than one bowling alley, make sure to list the bowling alley name for both teams or for the bowling alley name for both alleys that you'll be utilizing. In this case, we're going to say we are utilizing just one lane. Now, one thing to note right here in the middle of this document is every time you complete this form, you will submit it to SOMT Sports Director Scott Held at sheld at somt.org. If you print and fax it, send it to 77044. Six, two. Next thing you're going to do is go down here to the volunteer section. For this section, we will, you will list the first and last name of every registered volunteer. So that is a volunteer that has paperwork on file with Special Olympics Montana, or you are planning on submitting paperwork to Special Olympics Montana for. This includes all volunteers, LPCs, coaches, um, and anyone of the like that will be assisting during the bowling blitz with your team. This section is due at the registration date. Now, it currently says roster date, but this section is due at the registration date. And remember, for adults, that registration date is right there, and for schools, that registration date is right there. Okay, so for this section, we'll write in some random names. Okay, so now we have listed the volunteers that are going to be helping with our team. If you are an LPC, we'll be assisting with your team and will not be doing this remotely. Also list your name. Now, next section you're going to roll down to, again, this says do it roster date, but it is do it registration date, there we go. For this section, you will fill this out if you have any athletes that are participating in the compete from home skills. Those compete from home skills can be found in the games registration or games information packet. Now, if you have athletes who are competing from home, all you need to do for this registration date, that date right up here listed above, November 30th for adults and January 25th for schools, all you will have to do is fill out this gray section for your compete from home athletes. And the gray section is just the athlete's name. As you can see, we have two athletes listed in here currently. Next, you will roll down to the singles competition section. In the singles competition section, 
Right here, you can see this green section, it says due at registration date. So one thing I should mention is for this blue section and for this orange section that says due at final scores date, due at final scores date, these will be blank when you submit this for the registration. We do not need anything filled out in the blue or the orange section. Now that we're down here on singles competition, you will fill in any of your athletes that wish to complete compete in singles competition. So as you can see here, we filled in athlete name, the event the athlete will be taking place in, as you can see here, and the singles or roll column, write in singles, singles ramp, or singles assisted ramp for whichever event the athlete will compete in. So you'll fill in singles, singles ramp, or singles assisted in this column. For the case of the example here, we have an athlete in singles and an athlete in singles assisted. Now you're going to go and fill out the top two scores that your athlete has achieved in your practice or team sessions up to the date that the registration is due. So up to this point, the example we have Mark Day has scored a 101 and a 99, and Sarah Smith has scored a 48 and a 44. Those were their two best scores. Now it could be something uh, could be something different, and you just want to go ahead and fill in the top two scores. We do not need to average the scores, just their best possible scores. Now another thing to note for the entirety of this document is right now when you type in an alternate score, the total column will automatically change as long as you are using Microsoft Excel. So we'll say if Mark's best score was a 101 and his second best score was a 59, and watch that total column, it changes for you. So you shouldn't have to go in and automatic and add those up. It should automatically do it for you as long as you are using Microsoft Excel or a version of a spreadsheet app that is similar to Microsoft Excel. If you are using something that is not compatible with Excel, you will need to add those in for yourself. Next, you will go down to the next section which is traditional and unified doubles competition. Now for this one, as you can see here, we'll just need to fill out the yellowish orange section for the registration date. And for the gray section, you will just leave it blank until the final scores date. So what you wanna do in the traditional and unified doubles section is go ahead and type in the team name. If you do not list a team name, Special Olympics Montana will automatically assign one. So for example, we were named the Helena Dinosaurs. If we didn't put in Rolling Rhinos, we would be called Helena Dinosaurs Team One or something of the sort. So I took the athlete from above that can compete in doubles, that's Mark Day, went ahead and typed in Roll Athlete, top score one, remember it was 101, top score two, 99, and it automatically totaled there to get to 200. Now, if you have another athlete, you will just list them here where Luann's name is. But since you are utilizing a unified partner as this example, we typed in the unified partner's name, the unified partner's role, and then the unified partner's top two scores. Now, this means you're going to have your unified partners compete and actually practice in both singles games, but they're not actually competing in singles. So you're gonna take the best two scores from your athlete single games, as you can say for Luann here, it was 152 and 86, combining to 238. And that automatically totals up to 438. So using Mark's example from above, and we changed his score to 59. Now watch the total column by, Mar by Mark's name and then the team total column. They both change to adjust the reflection of the score. So again, you are going to have your athletes two best games. You're just put in the same number there that you put in up above. And then you'll put in your unified partners two best single games and that'll create a team total. And that is everything that you need to do. We can scroll down to the end of the form here. That is everything that you need to do for the registration date, which again is listed right here at the top of the document. Now moving on to the final scores due dates. We go down to this section, you'll wanna leave your volunteers in this section, the volunteers that help the practices or the competitions. 
now you're going to go down and if you have compete from home athletes you'll want to fill in their scores in this blue section as you can see for joe and jane they have their scores filled in and just like down below the score is automatically reflected on the far right there if you did not have any athletes that could, were doing compete from home just leave this entire section blank now for singles very similarly you'll go down here to the orange section and type in their two best scores so we'll say mark day for the second section now remember his two best scores from before were 101 and 99 this was pre-filled out but now it's 101 and 59. so we'll say mark day his top score and then remember this box needs to be the top scores for the athletes for the entirety of the season so counting their practice season so we'll say mark had bowled a 112 and then his next best score which had been from the previous registration date was 101 and there now we have the two best scores from the entirety of the season there is a chance that these scores from the registration date and then the scores at the final scores date will be the same but they can change now if you're utilizing traditional or unified doubles as an option you will go down and do the same thing you're going and type in their top two scores and once you can see here with Luan, top score was 152, second top score was 86. That didn't change because she didn't get any better scores between the registration and the final scores due date. So she's still at a 238, but you go ahead and fill these out. The two best scores for both your athlete and or your unified partners, and then they go into that box. Now, one more thing to note, is that there are separate forms depending on whether you're going to fill this out on a computer and email it in or if you're going to fax it and or, and or scan it in now if you were going to fill this out on the computer and email it in go ahead and use this form with the colors on it if you plan on scanning and emailing or faxing your registration and final scores form in we do have an additional form that can be used and it has a, a totally white backdrop this is to allow the form when it comes through the fax and through the scan to come through the most visible from time to time when a document is faxed and or scanned it can create if it has colors it creates a real nasty black and gray background hue that makes it very hard to read in which case you'll be getting a follow-up call to try to understand what was going on with the document so make sure if you're faxing or scanning and emailing you utilize this form that has no color on it but if you're going to fill it out and email it in go ahead and use this form with the colors on it if you want to if you have any questions feel free to reach out to the special olympics montana sports department and in particularly direct your questions to SOMT Sports Director Scott Held, who is the same person that you should be sending in this form to.